we have a few moments for uh, any questions. So um, is there anybody who would like to ask um, a question of either of our speakers so far this morning? As, as ever, yes, there is. Um, please, would you like to say your name and where you're from? Yes, of course. Ooh. Wow. Uh, Roger Bickmore from uh, Kiln. There's a question for Stephen about where, where you stand on Solvency 2, therefore. Um, tricky one, because I'm sensing that in London we might be ahead of some of our uh, colleague companies in Europe. And I wonder whether would it be in our interest that Solvency 2 was watered down or at some point quietly was kicked into the long grass, or are we in favour of its continued rollout and therefore would get some sort of competitive advantage from being ahead of the pack? Well, <clears throat> that's a very interesting question, uh, the extent to which we should uh, consider sort of pushing ahead as fast as possible in order to demonstrate that we've already you know, adopted it and that it is some form of competitive advantage against the danger of it um, appearing or it actually putting markets here um, at some competitive disadvantage. I mean, I, my own view on this is that I don't think we can proceed much faster than um, the rest of the European Union in adopting Solvency II for two or three reasons. Um, one of them is that, of course, many of the of the companies, whether whether in the company market or in Lloyd's or, or in both, um, a, a number of these organisations are international, European or global companies. And it doesn't seem to me likely, therefore, that they will want to see adoption of solvency to faster in one place than in another. Um, uh, and I also think that it's unlikely that our friends in Brussels will want to see that happen either. So, I mean, my sense would be that, that um, you know, we should use whatever remaining time we had have on this subject to fine tune the, uh, the rules and the implementation of it to make sure that it is truly a level playing field. Um, I mean, a, another point here which, which is worth bearing in mind, I think, is that um, for the most part in the UK at the moment, we don't have combined life and non-life companies. So there are one or two still around, but, but we've sort of moved away from that model. However, in continental Europe in particular, there are still a number of large organisations which are essentially what we used to call in the UK composites. And as I tried to indicate in, in my speech this morning, I think there are some very significant challenges for the life insurance industry, which they're strongly resisting, rightly in my view, um, and which remain to be resolved. Are there any other questions for our panelists? I have one. I'm, I'm conscious of the time constraints, but there is one point that I would just like to ask about. And um, perhaps, Tad, you might like to, um, yep. if, if sorry to take you by surprise, but <laughs> I, I found both presentations really fascinating about the challenges facing what you might call the conventional insurance industry. Ni neither speaker mentioned alternative forms of risk transfer. Mm -hmm. And for many years we have heard of alternative methods, cat bonds and so on, being in the air. I suppose my question is, do you think in, in view of what has been happening to the insurance industry over the last year or two, that we might see a surge of alternative products? Uh, yes, thank you very much. Uh, it's very interesting questions. And uh, um, I think this is my personal opinion, but the last three years is uh, full of uh, 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 events, uh, negative events in the insurance industry. And, uh, but we haven't seen so much robust development in the new alternative uh, uh, products or initiatives. Uh, please look back to uh, 
1975, we had the uh, you know, products liability crisis, mainly in the in, uh, United States, and Lloyd's has a, uh, lost a big ma money. And in middle 80s, we had the uh, uh, liability crisis, and this uh, was the trigger to create uh, ACE or Excel. And in 90s, we have seen a, a lot of uh, uh, side curves in the Bermuda. So every 10 years or after big events in the insurance industry, global insurance industries, you know, we have made significant step to step forward. And that uh, backed by a very uh, innovative mindset. And uh, also that some cooperation between the stock market, uh, financial market, and insurance uh, traditional market. So uh, back to your questions, my answer is, 2012 will be a very crucial year for us to develop further. And we learned a lot in the last three years, past three years. So it is a moment for us to step further. Also, we need to be very careful because uh, pricing is not uh, sufficient. However, this year, if we see some attractive movement in the price, move, uh, in pricing strategy, probably that it will be a great turning point for us to think about the new innovative uh, solutions for the future. Thank you. Um, are there any other questions for the panel? Yes, there's one there. Um, Mark Johnson from uh, Director of the LMA. A question for Tad, if I may. Um, you showed a very interesting slide about the difference between insured loss and economic loss. A two-part question. One is, do you think the differences still are of that magnitude in non-CAT business? And secondly, do you think the market has an increased appetite for writing more CAT? Yes, um, I re uh, received the two questions. First one is uh, uh, CAT. Uh, uh, re uh, two, two questions regarding was CAT. But uh, my answer is, it is very important for us to think about not only the CAT, you know, but also the man-made risks. It might be a very significant loss trigger uh, for the economies, you know. And of course, uh, CAT events in Asian countries, you know, Thailand flood was uh, really a, a big warning to the insurance industry, especially the Japanese uh, carriers. But also, uh, it's not the exam uh, exception, uh, because it, uh, we need to think about the Indonesian earthquake and China earthquake. And we need to think about the change of the exposures there. Also that uh, at the same time, of course, uh, we need to model uh, to build an uh, enhanced model to understand the risk itself. But uh, what I wanted to say to, to when I make a presentation this morning, that every risk is changing. And risk is compri uh, comprised, uh, consists of very basically Exposures change and uh, our risks change. So uh, probably that the back to your question, CAT is a very important uh, event for us. And uh, we need to create, uh, have a better understanding of the CAT. And then if we see that this uh, kind of uh, uh, initiative can be properly pursued, probably uh, 2012 is a turning point, will be a turning point. And also, uh, market pricing uh, for these uh, risks, uh, generally speaking, is uh, too low, especially in Asian countries. So probably that this is my, again, that the personal opinion, but uh, uh, pricing for the key, uh, cat events and cat risks, especially in Asian countries, should be reviewed. All right, thank you. Um, I'm going to call a halt to questions, I'm afraid, um, in view of the time. Would you please join me in thanking both our speakers for fascinating presentations? Thank you very much. Thank you.